All right, hello. Let's let everybody get on here. <laughs> Getting things set up, moved around, so I don't make a mess again. <laughs> I'd like to say I'm a little calmer today, but I don't think so. <clears throat> All right. Get the colors together. Alexa, play Sounds of the Ocean. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Just kind of getting things sorted so I don't knock them around. <laughs> oh, let me grab that cup, too. Say hi when you come on so I can see who it is. Hang on, cheer spins. <laughs> hey, Debbie, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Joyce. Let's see, I'm going to set this down here so I don't get anything on it because it's still drying. Give it a couple of minutes. Total snow day. Oh, man. Now, are you in Pennsylvania? Is that the one right place? I'm trying to connect names and places. It'll take me a little time. <laughs> Jennifer, are you in uh, Pennsylvania? Okay. Debbie, you are. Okay. <laughs> Ohio. Yeah, okay, so it's scooting through that area now, right? And it should be getting to uh, Debbie here soon. <laughs> Lucky you guys. We're actually, I probably shouldn't even say it because, you know, I'm going to feel the pain coming across our internet. But um, <laughs> we had a, a front, and today, though, it's kind of a weird day. We had 80 degrees. It was absolutely beautiful. But I think it's supposed to get cool again and have another front or some kind. I don't know. But that's Florida winters for you cold hot. I never know if I should bring things in from the frost or leave them out. So they kind of survive. If they survive me, then they're doing good. Hi, Kellyanne. Oh, you're getting snow now, Debbie? Wow. <clears throat> I'll tell you, I don't miss it. I don't miss it. I did my time up in Minnesota. And the first couple of years, it was fun. <laughs> it was like, I get to do all the things I never grew up doing. And um, after that, it became a real drudgery, especially getting to work. That, that got old. A couple hours on the road just to turn around and come back. Yeah, that wind is the worst, right? I mean, the snow itself, I don't mind. It's beautiful, but it's the wind, the wind chill, getting gas in your car, all those fun little chores going from the grocery to your car. <laughs> We used to, I used to go to Byerly's. I don't know if y'all have that store up there or not, but I used to go to Byerly's and pay the extra difference in the groceries just because I could drive up and they'd load my car for me. I mean, holy cow, not pushing that cart through that snowy ground surface and everything, all the ice. <laughs> it was worth it. Hi, Kayla. Welcome, everyone. You're three degrees. Oh, Joyce, I'm sorry. I'll try to send some warmth up your way. How about, well, today, maybe this will help. I mean, I had an impromptu decision to decide to do one again today. I'm actually tired. I uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. I haven't been sleeping well. So I've been waking up at like three in the morning and then I can't get to sleep. So I watch something on TV, usually dumb TV, um, for about an hour or so. So I'm missing time. And then I get up at my normal hour because, you know, the internal clock sets off. So... I thought, what the heck? I'm kind of into this. The um, Hi, Minnie. New York getting snow and Alabama's getting tornadoes. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I, I take your rain in South Dakota or South Carolina. Yeah, I, I, you know, we get bad weather all over the country, right? Somebody gets something sometime. So you can't, you can't run from it. Um, but I, this was an experiment and, and it worked out so well and so much. I mean, I, I, this is funny. I covered up a new cup, right? This was originally a cup I was going to use for my movie cup. And I did it in um, blacks and whites thinking, well, it's subtle for the pictures I was going to use. And 
I never epoxied over the images and there's a reason for it because I really wasn't happy with it subtly. And I finally just said yesterday, this is stupid. I don't really, I'm not a black and white person. I like color. And um, so I stripped all the images off, repainted, just put a, a, a spray paint white over the, the mica that I had on there and um, just took my colors that I like, right? These are colors I like and I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, so this worked out so well. This one's still curing. Um, so he's he's got like if I held it real hard, he'd probably hold a fingerprint that mode. So I'm gonna set him down over here real quick so I don't mess him up. I'll throw him on that table. Okay. And um, I'm gonna show you guys how we do this. And to my knowledge, nobody else has done this one. It's when you um, you know, and I've been into epoxy resins a long time. And uh, one of the things that really most intrigued me with getting into resin was um, countertops watching people do the countertops and um, the method that they do on the countertops to create a stone look or the um, marble look, the faux marbles, is the same methods that people use on the cups to create that marble look. Um, I think they're calling it the Nikki marble or something, but you know, they add a little glitter to it, but it's really the same methodology, the same way to do it. Um, so you're going to be surprised how simple this is. It's really a lot of fun. What I was most pleased with was it didn't turn to mud, right? I'm putting all these colors on the cup and it didn't get muddy. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. <laughs> well, I'm glad y'all were able to join. I, I wasn't sure it's Saturday and I figured, okay, I don't know. People are either going to be home or not. But then I thought, well, maybe the weather. So, hey, I guessed right. So my Florida friends are probably, um, I don't know if any of my Florida friends are on, but they're probably out enjoying the day. So... They can watch the video, right? <laughs> All right. So the first thing is, um, for a 30 ounce cup, I usually use, uh, you know, with my with my syringes, I usually use just under an ounce total for the cup. If I'm doing, um, like your mica powders, things like that. If I'm doing a heavy glitter cup, I might put a little bit more on there, maybe an ounce and a half. Um, in this case, because there's so many colors to sort the resin across. I'm actually putting in two ounces of resin. So it's a lot, but um, <clears throat> just keep that in mind because if you put a, if after, you know, I'm gonna have images on that cup, so I still have one more layer to do, but that layer is gonna be a very thin layer. I just need to coat the, um, it's gonna be a clear coat and I just need to coat over the images I put on, right? So uh, it is a little heavier of a cup because I'm putting more resin on it, but just something to keep in mind. So I'm okay with that, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Um, all right, so what I've done is I pre-measured out my part uh, A and my part B, all right? So they're each an ounce. This is that silicone cup, by the way. If y'all haven't um, gone out and looked at the shop on Imagine Dream Create VIP, our, our sister group that I mentioned yesterday, um, take a browse through there. She's got these cups, and they're phenomenal. I actually am liking using it. Um, because resin won't stick to silicone, it'll dry. And then when it dries, it just pops right out and you take a little baby wipe and wipe out all the little crumbs and stuff that are left behind. And you've got a nice new cup to use again. And, um, so I don't waste as much, right? So that, that is a nice, nice aspect there. Um, I'm liking it. So anyway, I put the thicker one in, which is part A. Typically when you mix, you want to put your heavy one in first and then put your lighter one in next. So I'm going to go ahead and just get those poured in and I'm going to mix and we can talk while they mix. And because this is a little bit more resin than I usually use on the cup, so I'll mix a little bit longer than you're probably used to me seeing do. Okay. And I don't worry about bubbles. Um, I know a lot of people on the different groups have talked about micro bubbles and the way they stir it and, you know, blah, blah. Um, the, the point of resin is all your resins that you buy, that was a FedEx truck. I'm sorry, I got my door open so you could probably hear some of the outside stuff. Um, all of the resins that you buy come with instructions, right, on how to mix it, how to properly measure it. We talked about that yesterday. And one of the things that they also talk about is how to pop the bubbles. And it's usually either a torch, so if you like fire, a torch is fun, um, or it's your heat gun or both. But those two methods of heat are what you want. Some people have, I've seen just use uh, a spray of alcohol. And it's like, no, 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 no. Alcohol is only going to spread your resin around, right? It thins the resin because um, if, if you use enough alcohol, it actually wipes off your resin. It's going to dissipate the resin 
quantity quality and it's not going to cure correctly right so we use it for cleanup think about it that way so it's not going to pop the bubbles what it's doing is moving your resin more uh, making it more uh, viscous and it's going to uh, fluid fluidly move around right so you want heat to pop your bubbles and my resin in particular which is the mas brand um, on amazon i it says you can use either the heat gun or the or the torch and what i do is i get it on here and i put the torch on it first and get those bubbles popped and then i'm good and then i'll do another torch when i'm done with the artwork right i'll, I'll just kind of give it another heat of the gun or or the torch um, and again, you don't want to get it too close because you don't want it to smoke and you don't want it to catch fire. If it does one of those, if it smokes, sometimes it's just on that cusp of getting too bit, too hot. You might be okay. It might be saved. But usually that's singeing it. And what will happen is it gets really crispy hard. And so your, your option is if it's still a wet cup, a really wet cup, you can scrape that section off and try and recover it then. Or you can let it dry and then just sand it and recoat it. Okay. Not a huge thing, a lesson learned, just stay, stay at a good distance from it. You don't want to get on it and you don't want to stay on it. You want to move around. Okay, let's see. Hey, Pixie. Yeah, so <laughs> mom joined again. Hopefully this time she can figure out that she's got volume. So let's see if she can answer us. Are you going to say hi? Can you answer us? <laughs> this is a test of her technical skills. <laughs> We give each other such a hard time. She was kidding with me today because I couldn't figure something out on the phone trying to get Facebook to share a picture or something. I mean, on the phone app, it's so hard because it's not the same as what we're used to on our laptop. So I can't f always find the things I'm looking for. So she gave me a hard time on that today. So sh she hasn't said anything yet. So mom, hello, Pixie, can you hear us? <laughs> Yesterday she was on her Kindle and it said she didn't have any volume to hear and I'm like, okay, that's a strange message So today she's on her laptop. So we'll see. We'll see if she's figured it out <laughs> I have a lot of fun with my mom. I'm blessed. She's she's a great person and I made a, a You know, I think we all as, as daughters I think that in sons I think we all make a, a vivid choice as we're growing up whether or not we're going to cross that barrier and leave being a, a child of the parent to being a friend of the parent. That's my personal thought. And I was fortunate enough to have a really good friend in my mom. And and I really am friends with my dad. It's just a different relationship. Um, but I really, really have so much in common with my mom that we just, we're buddies. We, we get along so well. So having them live with me was just no problem. You know, we, we all get along. We all have our space and we all do our thing. So that's really nice. Hi, Lisa. Well, I'm so glad you guys could join on an impromptu note. I was just saying, I, I hate to do that to people and not have it scheduled, but sometimes you just kind of are in the mood. And I forgot my gloves, so let me grab those real quick. That's kind of critical. Gloves. So this is a... Um, this is a fun cup. So I have pre-sorted, <laughs> let that truck go by. I have pre-sorted my colors. Okay. And um, what I'm using, all right, that's all mixed. What I'm using is for the base, I'm using what is called art in glow. So it actually has a glow in the dark capability. Um, how much it glows? I'm not a hundred percent. We'll find out on that one. Okay. Um, but it's a uh, pearl pigment. It's a white pearl pigment, and I got it off of Amazon. That's the label. I put it in the container. It comes in a bag. Okay, so we're going to use that as the base because I like that pearl essence that it gives. And then I'm, these are all from the China facility that I got off of Amazon. So their labels are they're either not or they're in Chinese. But uh, we're using this blue. I decided to do a beach theme. This is going to be kind of a fun one, I think, too. Hey, Lisa, Lisa. Yeah, I said hi. <laughs> All right, Pixie still hasn't said hi, you guys. So we're going to give her a hard time. <clears throat> okay, orange. All right. And then we got kind of a brighter green. So it's all in the green. This is really kind of a, it's an orange, but it's kind of a coral, corally color. So that's why I'm using it. Ocean theme, right? So we got the royal. Got another color of the blue which is really pretty 
We've got more of a teal aqua. Okay, and then just a touch of this brown. It's kind of for the sand, right? You got to have that in there somehow. And I've got them sorted out in all the little, whoops, all my little measuring cups already. Okay, I've got all the powders already out in that. Because once you get going, you kind of got to keep going. All right, so I've got all my, let me move these guys out of the way. All right, so I've got all those powders in there. I've got my resin mixed up. I'm using two ounces for this, for this cup which is a little bit more than I usually use, of course, on a first, on a first pour. All right. And I'm using the majority. I'm going to put about an ounce in the first cup, which is going to be the background color. We're going to put that on first. So just about an ounce because you want enough to coat your cup and the rest will get sorted out with the other colors. Get in here. There we go. So this is the um, pearl mica powder pigment. It's a it's a glow in the dark. Um, and actually, this isn't the mica. This is the pigment powder. That the I apologize. This this white background with the glow in the dark is actually a pigment powder. And then the others from China are all mica powders. And the difference is just a pearl essence kind of look between the two. One has more of a I don't want to say glittery but shimmery sheen to it, and this one has more of a um, pearlescence kind of sheen when you use the pigment. Okay, scrape you off pretty good. Here we go. All right, so now we're just going to put the, the background color on. And I've coated this cup. This is the one, if y'all were on the live last night, that I started to recover and I realized the color I was using was not going to cover that background. So I sprayed it and then sanded it a little bit because, of course, like a dork started to put that color on and I didn't get it all off so it ended up looking like a dripping popsicle so I had to smooth it out but I figure with all these colors and everything I'm not too worried about what I can still see here so sometimes you just gotta experiment and I probably could have could have stripped it but you know there's a level of Jane being a little lazy, and as long as my cup comes out pretty, I'm okay. And if it doesn't, then a lesson learned, and I'll know to do it better next time. I'm a work smarter, not harder kind of mentality. Okay. Put this down on the bottom. And, you know, it's funny, I, I put my care stickers on the bottom, but I still find myself making sure the bottom is pretty, because you just never know. So you can see some of that sheen, you know, happening right now with the white pearl. Um, it looks like a pearl. This is really a pretty powder. I'll have to charge it up and see in the light and see if it how much it really glows though. Okay, so that is all I need of the glove right now. I'm gonna take that off. And now I'm gonna take the resin that I have and I'm gonna sort it. Let me set him down. And I'm gonna sort it into the other colors. And you just you don't need much, like I'm putting that much into that color. Okay. So I'm just taking this leftover resin that I've mixed and pouring it evenly across these cups. If there is a color that you want or you know more prominent then you put a little more of the resin in that color. But in this case they're going to be pretty much even. And you don't need much of the powder, the mica powder in these because I'm not mixing a whole lot as you saw. Um, I have very little, very little powder in there. Okay, Jean just got it on her arm. <laughs> what? We are starting already. Okay, I'm not going to get it on my shirt. I am definitely not. Okay, I got a few more cups to fill. Hang on. And it doesn't have to be, you know, scientifically all even. You just kind of eyeball them. 
but I put about the same mica powder in all of them. Um, just like the tip of the popsicle stick. Not very much. Now when I'm done with the silicone cup that I'm using, that's the cool part too, is I tip it upside down. I have a silicone baking mat I use, um, and I also usually have plastic on my table. But um, the silicone, you know, the resin won't stick, right? So I tip this upside down as soon as I'm done with it. And then when it's all dry, it pops right out. Comes right off the sides, usually pulls right off the bottom, so there's not a lot of cleanup. Now, you need to pay attention to your resin brand and see how long of a working time you have. I know that this working time for, for mass is usually about 25 to 30 minutes. And again, it depends on your heat temperatures that you have in the room. Um, if you're in the 70s, then, you know, that's probably accurate. If you're cooler, 65-ish, um, then it will be a little longer, okay? But it also takes longer for your cup to cure at that point. Just getting the last bit out. Okay, so I'm going to go set my cup down. Let him dry that way. We've got the ocean sounds playing in the back because, you know, we're doing an ocean scene. <laughs> I know, baby wipes, yes. Could have guessed that I would still needed to buy them. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Lisa. I, I really, I'm just addicted to ocean, you know, ocean colors, anything along that line. Okay. Which is why I moved back here. It is my recharge place, you know, when you're really worn out emotionally, physically, whatever. I love to just go sit at the beach and watch people, watch the waves, watch the birds. And next thing I know, I'm not thinking about all my problems anymore. So I just feel very recharged when I leave. And it usually doesn't even take that long. Okay, I'm just going to mix the colors now. So I'm just wiping my stick and using the same stick so I don't get the colors mixed up. When I get done mixing, then I'll do a quick torch to that, and then we'll put the colors on. So it takes a little time because there's more colors involved, more thinking about what you're doing with it. But it is a fun way to use a lot of different colors, too. Um, for my movie cup, I have, if y'all remember, the drive-ins and stuff that used to play the dancing food. <laughs> so I had shared those images on, on our group at some point, so they're in there. Um, but I'm going to put those on, which would be real cute. And this one, because it's the beach, uh, you know, I'll probably, I don't know if I'll do the turtle. I think this time I'm going to try and find a cute crab. Uh, image that I can share on it and um, you know there's a cross between animated looking and uh, real so I'll see what I can find because um, I love using the lifelike you know animals of the sea or watercolor if you go looking on Google for watercolor images oh, I, I love finding those too so soft and fun Like I searched for uh, watercolor seaweed and I got some really cool looking images. I'm always searching on Google. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but I'm in a class right now in college. I'm, I'm working on my master's. So I'm always on Google searching. So when I'm taking a break from that, I'm usually looking for something creative. I hope to be graduating with it in August. That'll be nice, because I'm ready. <laughs> these colors are so pretty. I just love how these colors are. I, I'm, I'm really addicted to the brightness of these.
Okay. So I'm going to let these rest for now because I just got done stirring them all again. Um, and I'm going to torch this guy real quick. And let me uh, wipe. Don't want it to stick to my um, surface here. Okay, there we go. All right. So we're going to torch the bevels out real quick on the base. And you can't see them as easy on the camera, but I can see them kind of popping. And it, usually they have bubbles because you've stirred them and gotten the air mixed into it and trapped in with the, uh, the pigment. Alrighty. So nothing real major there. Okay. So now what I do, need my stick back now. Hello. Okay. No particular order, but you could decide the colors that you want. Um, yeah, Jennifer, I mean, how can you go wrong with ocean, right? Oh, my master's, Debbie, um, Deborah, is um, higher education <laughs> with a focus on adult learning. Um, my background is in instructional design and technology. So um, with the technology knowledge, I help people understand what that means um, between their customers and such. And so I figured it'd be nice to work at a college someday and actually teach. Oh, your MBA. Awesome, Liz. Congrats. Congrats. I, I tell you, I'm older, I know, and I did my bachelor's older. Um, I'm a cancer survivor, and um, I decided in uh, when I got cancer that I was just going to go for it and get my bachelor's. I had always wanted to do it, but as a um, high school student, I was a terrible, terrible student and um, not a good candidate for college at that time. I just did not have the confidence in learning. I didn't feel I could really understand what was being taught. So I had a miserable experience in my early education years. Um, so I went technical and that worked for me. You know, it, it paid my bills and, and it gave me fun with my hands and uh, learning of that nature. But I wanted more, you know, and um, so when I experienced getting, I had time down for cancer and taking my treatments, I decided to join my online courses in uh, Weldon. University, and I graduated with my BS in 2012. And um, so now I hope getting my master's, I can use my education in my career more so. There's a lot of colleges here in Daytona. So if I can't do it online, then I'd like to do it in person and build a way up to doing online education. Okay, so you can see I'm just putting streaks down, just lightly, you know, letting them drop. It's not real, doesn't have to be perfect. And what I did initially was I was I was doing the technique to each color and then I decided about midway through I don't need to do that. I'm going to put all the colors on and then I'm going to come back and show you the technique um, to kind of make it look marble without mixing them. And I just get all the colors put on this way. So we'll have time to chat because this takes a little bit. I'll look up here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put something on the bottom because, like I said, I still worry about how the bottom looks, even though I put my care sticker on it. Okay, and I'm done with you. Oh, hey, Liz. In 14, wow. Being a single mom, me too. Started my master's the same year. My degrees are both for my career. Awesome. I started my master's and then I decided I just couldn't take it on at that time. I had um, a lot of uh, fluctuations occurring in my personal life and with my um, career at that time. And I just didn't feel I could really focus on my master's. So I, I stopped before it cost me anything. Um, but now I've circled back and I decided to pick it up. So in January last year, I, I started it. And yeah, I have two girls. Um, they're both adults now, but the youngest is um, um, disabled, has, um, has some problems that way, so she can't really work and she's going for her disability. Um, but I'm supporting her basically up there in Minnesota until she can. And then my oldest, 
Uh, she's just been a real mess. She's, for whatever reason, you know, they start young when they decide to do this, but she was about 16, 17 getting into drugs, and she hasn't stopped. She's 30. So she is now um, working to get herself into, into rehab. But, you know, we've gone down that road, jail, all of it. And, of course, for me, the bottom of the barrel would have been a long time ago. Um, but she's different. So it breaks my heart, but there's nothing as a mom I can do except support her and, and love her and, and encourage her to do the right thing. But I don't enable her. That's a big difference, too. And I know there's a lot of times that just completely frustrates her that it doesn't work. So a lot of that in my life. And where I work, they're always going through layoffs. They all are, everywhere is. Um, one of my professors just told me she had been um, teaching at a college for, oh, I think she told me 18 years and, uh, you know, obviously tenured and she got laid off. Luckily, she said she had the ability to just retire, but I, I don't know what's going on with our country. Getting rid of everybody that has knowledge and experience. But I figure if I can get into being a college professor, even if I have to work a couple of different part-time jobs at places online, they don't care how old you are as you teach. You know, <laughs> your students have no clue online and don't care either way. Next color. So see, it's just, it's cool, right? But um, I'll show you how I get them to work together. Oh, autism, Liz, bless you. I, I, you know, I had some friends that had um, a couple of kids um, with autism, and oh, God bless you. That is, my heart goes out to you. I have, um, well, my oldest was a preemie. She was born very early. She was 27 weeks, so she only weighed one pound, 12 ounces when she was born, and um, she was there at Children's Hospital in Minneapolis, and um I met a lot of families, a lot of parents that had children, obviously, you know, in the NICU, uh, born early for whatever reason, twin, you know, sick, um, drugs, um, and um, a couple of them ended up with problems along the line of autism, in the spectrum of autism, as they grew. I don't know if Nicole's problems have come from that. I suspect, you know, as a mom, sometimes I feel that way because she never learned to attach. And I think it was from being born so preemie, you know. Um, they put them through a lot of pain because they had to poke them all the time for blood and do surgeries in the incubator, you know, things like that. And hell of a life when they'd normally be in a womb. So, but I also keep telling her this isn't why you survived, you know. <laughs> so there's more for her in life, but I don't know if she's going to have an opportunity to get there. I pray for it. So each color I just put on the bottom. It's just kind of a thing. Like I said, if your bottoms are, are open and available, you know, then that makes for a pretty bottom. But um, I usually put my care sticker on there. I do online, too. I love online classes. You know what? It's like the gym. If I had to go into the classroom for my schooling, I would not have done it. I wouldn't have stuck with it. No way. It's just not who I am um, to be lectured at, for one. I just would, I mean, for work, I go to places where I have to be sitting in a lecture, basically, all day for eight hours, and I go nuts. I do that on occasion, thankfully, not often. And it's just not my personality. I just, I get really stringy and wiry and impatient. I want out of there. And um, so I can imagine I'd be the same way if I had to sit through a classroom. So I love the online education. I get a lot out of it. And I can just take my time at my convenience. You know, usually it's nighttime. Um, I do all my homework and concentration or first thing in the morning. Just kind of depends if I had any rest. But I do like it. And I like the people. I just, that's the only downside. I feel like I don't really know a lot of the classmates very well because, you know, we're all doing our own thing. And you don't have a lot of interaction. Okay. 
little bit there. Okay. This is so pretty. These greens. Oh my gosh. Okay. I got to come around my table with a baby wipe. I'm dripping. <laughs> like I said, I usually have plastic down. I don't have to worry about it. This is kind of mesmerizing, right? <laughs> I hope I hope you're not bored to death, but I, I kind of like this. And with that white background, you can see how it just helps keep the colors alive. Put your arm in it. So I'm just kind of looking for open spaces here that I might have missed with some of the other colors. I've got a few more colors to go yet. These are just scrumptious though. Ooh. I really don't know why I didn't think to try this before. Just kind of came to me. All right, three more colors. Oh, your math class, math. Oh, God bless you, Liz. <laughs> Math is not my strength. <laughs> Here in Missouri, we got snow today. We had a couple tornadoes in December. It's crazy. Wow. In one month's time, we can have tornadoes, heat, freezing temps, and snow. I know. Missouri has crazy weather. Missouri, Indiana, that belt, you know, you guys really do have some crazy weather. I had a sister that lived in Missouri for a while in St. Louis. And we have relatives in Indiana. Really, you know, for me personally, I feel that the country's weather pattern has really gotten crazy. A lot of changes. I mean, look at California. Holy cow. And um, Alaska, all the, all the earthquakes in Alaska. We've got some crazy weather. And our hurricanes, they've been so much bigger. You know, they're predicting that our hurricanes are actually going to start being more Category 5, 6s. They're going to have to create a new category. I mean, that's crazy. Terrifying. I watch a lot of sci-fi, <laughs> but I do think that they get it from somewhere. Okay. I'm saving the brown for last because I know I don't want to use very much of that. But I want to just kind of put just sparses of this. Just a sparse amount. There's a little coral in every ocean. Just a little bit of the brown. And then I gotta get a baby wipe. What? Your live video was stopped because it may contain music. Oh. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. It didn't like my radio. Let 
Resume. You guys still there? I'm getting these weird messages. Okay, I probably could have gone without those colors, but that's all right. I like them. Okay, let me, um, I've got my fingers in this. Let me get my baby wipes real quick. Ugh. Oh, hang on. What the heck? Okay, what is going on here? Okay. Just cleaning my hands real quick before we take the next step. All right. Yeah, you know, water lilies, exactly. I mean, water, we're on the, we're on it. Yeah, can you guys still see me? It's not happy because I had Alexa playing um, some of those sounds in the background, but I've turned it off, so it should be fine. Sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> okay, can y'all see? Still see me? Hello. Can you still see me? Okay, good. All right, so now what I'm doing, taking the back of my spoon, this is that sil silicone spoon, and I'm just letting it run along the edges, going right into the paint. I don't wanna smear it, I just wanna let it ride along top each row, okay? If that makes sense. And um, if this were a marble with the resin, then that's pretty much how you do it. You use very little paint color and just use your uh, smoothing out. See that? And some of those colors, if they're too dark, you know, you just kind of smear them a little heavier. Whoop. Keep my arm out of the resin. Good grief. So this takes a little love and care, but it's worth it. I thought the outcome was so pretty. And you're just taking those hard lines that you dripped on, right? And you're just smoothing them down, that's it. So I'm not smearing them, I'm not mixing them, just smoothing them around, helping them get down in there. And that softens them out. I'm just, I'm not even applying pressure. I'm letting the spoon's weight do it. You could use popsicle stick. Um, you know, whatever you feel that your hand has a, a deft feel to it, do it. I'm just kind of circling the bottom. Oh, that's really pretty, you guys. Okay, and then once I'm done with this part, then I'm just looking for spots here I might have missed that feel a little too harsh. Then I'm going to spritz some alcohol on it just from above. 
from above. Let that swirl around down there. That is cool. Okay, let me show you what this looks like real quick. Let's see if I can get better color. Yeah. Nighttime colors coming in here. There we go. Okay. Get back there. Okay. Where were you? Hello. There. Okay. <laughs> oh, I got the spoon from Imagine Dream Create from Kathy's um, shop, our, our sister group. She's got a shop, so um, if you go out there, she's on Etsy as well, but her link, I think, on her Facebook site will take you there. These are awesome. And again, silicone, so they'll just wipe clean. So now I'm going to step back because I don't want to breathe this in. I'm just going to, from the up above, you know, I'm coming up above it, I'm just going to spritz some alcohol ink. Not a whole lot. I just kind of did that before and I figured I'll do it again because what it does is it kind of makes it move a little bit, like I said. So it's just making those lines come together. And uh, yeah, this is really pretty. Um, well, and I just got my hand in a resin again. Hang on. <laughs> and where is it? Go ahead and wipe that off so I'm not tracking that around. There are times after working with resin, I feel like I have uh, taken a bath in it. Okay. All right. So let me bring the camera around this way. Maybe you'll get a better view with the light. There we go. See if it'll... There you go. Okay. That's a better lighting. So you can kind of see with the alcohol ink, it just kind of um, gave it a little ripple look. Thank you. Yeah, isn't that cool? And again, I wasn't sure I wanted the or liked the brown and the coral in there, but I'm kind of liking it now. It breaks it up a little bit. But you can put whatever colors, you know, whatever color works for you. Um, if you did a black background, you could probably use some of the more uh, intense colors. You know, get some neon, acrylic paints, things like that. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So it takes a little more work and time because, you know, obviously you've got all the resins to mix and um, get prepared, but, uh, or all the pigment colors. Um, but I think it's worth it. Those came out really cool. So he'll stay on the turner now, um, more than likely, you know, these, these get this resin and I have more resin on me. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here with the baby wipe. Um, <clears throat> the company, you know, the resin company, Moz, uh, M-A-S says that in about four hours, it'll be, you know, soft, right. But handable, it won't drip anymore, that kind of thing. So I typically leave it on the turner running until I know it's not going to drip anymore, until it won't sog to the bottom. Um, so that's, you know, around that four hour time. Let it just keep spinning and that way I don't have to worry about it. And what I could do, I don't see any bubbles right now, so I think I'm okay. But you could take another, you know, torch to it. Um, just to make sure the final one and that just helps release any that might be trapped. <clears throat> now a piece of advice if you use a torch, um, remember that if you're using alcohol inks or alcohol 
spray, let it have a few seconds before you turn the flame to it because you need it to dissipate, otherwise it will catch fire. It'll burn off, but it's not something you really want. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. I, this is really cool. This will be fun. I don't know what design I'll put on it yet. You know, I'm almost kind of seeing maybe I do seaweed on the bottom. Maybe I do, um, maybe I do some fish swimming around it or something. It just, sometimes they speak to you what kind of images look good on there. Well, again, thank you all for your time today and um, <laughs> and your nice comments and feedback. I appreciate it. And uh, I didn't realize we have so much in common, a lot of us. That's awesome. It's always nice to kind of chat and get to know each other. So, yeah, if you, like I said, if you haven't gone to our Imagine Dream Create VIP group, uh, do that. Uh, join. It should be an automatic membership for you. So when you go there, it should just make you join right away. You don't have to wait for somebody to approve it. And because um, I've done that in the reverse, so the so the members from there can come here. And uh, she has a shop, and that's where I get the the cups, the silicone, the spoons. Um, she's got glitter, beautiful glitter. I used some of those yesterday on the wine goblets. Um, so just and then her watercolor or her water slide papers. She's got those, and and yesterday's experience with that one was really nice. So, um, so take a look, support support those that we work with. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right. Any questions or anything, anything going on in your world? Pretty soon, you're gonna have to start sharing what you're working on, whether it be cups or something else. You know, creative, what you're doing to spend your time. Because you can share whatever in this group art-wise. I mean, it's not just cups, right? <clears throat> That's why I called it what I did, because I really want people to enjoy sharing their art and their creativity. But this is, <laughs> I'm really liking this. This is such a different look, too, than, let me grab the other one than um, the first one here. I mean, look at that. This one's a little bit more of the primary, right? It's funny how things come together. I felt like I was creating crayons, getting all the colors for that one. You working on a dragon cup, Chris? Very cool. <laughs> I'm looking at your picture. You got a, a kitty and a doggy. <laughs> yeah, the dragon cups are patience time consuming, right? I mean, that's another one. You got to sit there and do the scales. But I always say as I'm doing it, it's like, why am I making this? I'm driving myself crazy and I just don't want to spend my time doing this. And then when I go to put the color on it, oh man, it's worth it. Nothing like it. And those sell so fast for me. I mean, my goodness, they were so excited when they saw Dragon Cups on my table. I'm probably going to do another show in February. Um, I've got enough inventory that I probably should. <laughs> but uh, if anybody sees anything that you think somebody wants to buy before that show, let me know then because um, I hate to sell it before they have an opportunity to it. It's going to be an outside show um, just one day. I'm not doing the big shows anymore. Those are three days involved and a lot of uh, a lot of time, a lot of energy. So I like the one-day shops. Those are a lot easier. Just put your tent up and put your stuff out and enjoy the day. And when you're tired, it's time to go home. So that works for me. Great. Yeah, I want to see it, Chris. That's awesome. Do you know what color you're going to use yet? I love those pigment changing ones, um, but I have seen others. I, I've seen where um, some people have spray painted the color on and then put the resin over it. Um, I've seen uh, acrylic paints that they've used. Um, so there's so many varieties that you could add to those uh, scales. No right or wrong. Has anybody made a mermaid cup yet? I've seen that done a lot, but I don't have an interest in doing the mermaid. Well, I say that, but right now I don't. I might. I like doing all the water stuff, so maybe. Yeah. 
I think did I show you my anchor? This was a this was a fun cup. Um, oh, oh, good. That was just my torch. <laughs> I uh, have used this torch for so much and so long that I have resin on the bottom so it doesn't sit straight, so it tends to fall over. Um, so I decided to try the crackle on a cup. And so this was fun. I did the uh, dark blue background with the teal aqua um, on the front and let it crackle. And then I put uh, my anchor. That's one of the water watercolor um, things I was telling you about that I found. So um, it still needs another coat. That's why I have the tape on it. Yeah, the color changing, Chris. Yeah, and they have so many options. So um, I, I bought all mine off of Amazon. So if, if you're looking for inter, you know, information on that, let me know. But um, most of them are out there on Amazon. And, you know, they go like golds, um, blues, you know, uh, I think there's some reds. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I mean, these really come out cool. But again, I, I, I migrate towards, you know, the ocean stuff. So I really love that, those colors together. <clears throat> you know, they're, they're not that hard, Liz. Um, I got... What did I use? Um, let me get the crackle stuff. I'll, t I'll show you because it worked really easy. It's by Folk Art. Crackle Medium. There you go. And this bottle will last forever. Um, but it's really easy. You just put uh, your base coat down. You let it dry. And then put your top coat down and um, let it dry and then put, no, put your base coat down, put the, put the uh, crackle on, and then put your top coat on. And it tells you how to do it. Yeah, the base coat, the medium, let it dry, and then apply the contrasting top coat. Um, and then what I did is just use my hair dryer to help dry it faster and crack it more. So it really worked. It was instant. You're welcome. Okay, Lisa. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your work and your creativity, and hopefully one of you want to do a live here soon. Um, I'd love to see that. And uh, don't be shy, right? You got to start somewhere. But um, thanks for joining me. This was a fun experiment. <laughs> we'll keep them coming. Can I do a crackle? Yeah, yeah. I've got another cup. I, I'm probably going to try to make uh, as a you know as a partner to this um, in some colors of choice that will work. And um, so when I do it, I can certainly add that to the live. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty quick, especially if you use the hair dryer. You're welcome. Okay, well, you guys have a rest of your Saturday. Um, enjoy it. Stay safe in that weather pattern that you're all in. That's awful. And hopefully you get some of our warmth from down here. And this was fun. Thank you. All right. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to upload this to, to the YouTube channel I've shared. Um, right now I'm just uploading what I've done, but I'll eventually probably do some lives out on YouTube as well just to get, help get a better, a bigger audience better. No, you guys are the best. Um, bigger audience um, so that I can try to get some sales gathered around too. Because um, I got a, you know, I've got an inventory I need to sell. <laughs> Creativity doesn't stop, but the inventory builds up. All right. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good one.